Well, hello and welcome, everybody. Welcome to the show. This is your host, Ken D. Foster. And today we're calling this show The Courage to Get Your Health Back, right? So many of you out there are still having issues with health. And man, it, you know, it's no fun living with disease in our body, is it? No, not at all. You know, we want to eliminate disease completely out of our bodies. And for a lot of you, you know, you haven't pursued maybe the avenues that you need to heal. Now, how do I say that to you? Because not knowing you, well, listen, I know this. I know that health is a quest. And if you have issues, health issues, uh, that you need to get on the quest, right? So if you're going to, let's say, uh, an individual, you know, and bless their hearts, we got a lot of great doctors and, and practitioners out there. But if you're not getting the results that you need to get for you to heal, then this is the show for you. We're going to be talking about ways that you can uh, look at your body, look at your health. Specifically, ladies, if you're having thyroid issues and you've got uh, some of the thyroid symptoms that we'll be talking about uh, uh, today, Hashimoto's disease. I know people close to me have had that. And uh, can you heal that? Hmm. Well, we're going to find that out today, but I'm going to give you a hint. Um, good, good chance you can if you if you get on the quest, right? The quest is for natural healing. All right, I have a very special guest today on my show. He's been practice. He's a practitioner for decades, and he uh, he's a doctor. He's an, you know he's a person that has knowledge and wisdom about how to help you heal. So I hope you'll stay tuned. I got to take a quick break and we take the uh, break. We'll be right back and uh, we'll have our, our guest. Well, welcome back, everybody, and welcome my guest, uh, Dr. Gil Kajiki. Doctor, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Ken. You know, we've got a uh, health crisis around this world. It's, it's like it's never been before. And um, I think that, uh, you know, as I mentioned in the opening, there's, uh, you know, once we get on a quest and realize that we need to take charge of our own uh, bodies, we need to take charge of responsibility for our bodies. And once we start to do that and stop turning it over to maybe people that are well-intentioned but may, may not have the right answers for you, we can get on this quest and start to heal. Um, you know, let me give you a formal introduction first before we get into the questions. Uh, Dr. Kajiki is a certified functional medicine practitioner. He's a chiropractic, chiropractor, and patient educator with, cli with clients in four continents. Um, he is revolutionizing the way that hypothyroidism hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's uh, autoimmune thyroid are diagnosed and corrected using a drug-free solution. Dr. Kajiki creates his personalized programs with dietary changes, nutritional supplements, vitamins, minerals, and enzymes and lifestyle enhancements to improve lab test results and reduce symptoms. Okay. I know this is True. How do I know this is true? We can heal naturally because, as I was telling Dr. Kajiki, my wife was diagnosed with Hashimoto's and thyroid uh, uh, disease and, and was able to heal that naturally, right? So, doctor, how'd you get into this? Um, similar story as yours, Ken, <clears throat> is uh, I was a chiropractor just doing a lot of muscle, musculoskeletal work, headaches, back pain, scoliosis. And then my wife started coming down with all of these different symptoms. I didn't know they were hypothyroid. I just knew she was fatigued, had hair loss, weight gain, depression, insomnia, digestive issues, heart palpitations, just a whole myriad of things. And she went to a couple of doctors. All the doctors said her lab tests were normal. You're just under a lot of stress. You're traveling a lot. You've got two teenage kids. <clears throat> Long story short, I ended up finding out she had Hashimoto's. And you could read about her story in my book, but I went to the hospital where she was at for a week before Christmas. And I said, hey, I know what's going on. You have Hashimoto's. And her doctor happened to be there. And he said, you're right. He looked at the test. You're right. You do have Hashimoto. I said, great. What are we going to do? And he said, well, we're going to give her some Synthroid. And I said to him, but isn't Synthroid a thyroid medication? He said, 
So why are you going to treat an autoimmune condition with a thyroid medication? And he said, because that's the way we do it in conventional medicine. And I knew at that point, she was not going to get the help from conventional medicine. And I had to find other methods. And I, I sought out my colleagues who knew more than me. And I went to seminars and I read books. And I just absorbed this information about how can I get my wife's Hashibotos in remission naturally without medication. And 18 months later, we were able to do that. And I thought, she can't be the only one. <clears throat> and so my practice went from musculoskeletal chiropractor to full virtual remote consulting for autoimmune and Hashimoto's thyroid conditions. Why don't we identify the two? Okay. Uh, autoimmune versus ha- versus Hashimoto. And are they interrelated at all? Yeah. Good question. Um, autoimmune means your own immune system is mistakenly attacking your own healthy body tissue. Hashimoto's is an autoimmune thyroid condition. So your own immune system is attacking your own thyroid. Rheumatoid arthritis means your own immune system is attacking your own joints. Crohn's means your own immune system is attacking your own intestinal tract. So you have autoimmunity as a big category, and then you have different variations of autoimmunity. I get it. Okay. Why does the body attack itself? Wow. You just asked the million dollar question. Um, We really don't exactly know. Um, We do know that there are multiple factors. Uh, Typically, it's a genetic disposition. So if you've got family history of autoimmunity, you've already got strike one against you. So we got genetic disposition. We have some kind of environmental trigger could be personal stress, psychological stress, a physical injury, exposure to mold. Uh, It could it could be, you know, a whole number of outside in factors that turn on these genes. And then there is some debate as to whether it's a uh, intestinal permeability issue where your gut lining becomes uh, permeable to foreign objects that it shouldn't have. And 80% of your immune system is housed in your gut. So what I believe is that you have this perfect storm of genetic disposition, intestinal permeability, environmental trigger, and they all come together at once. And then you turn on the genes for autoimmunity. That's my belief. Yeah, you know, I, it seems like, you know, um, from my point of view, and I'm not a doctor, you know, but I've you know been exposed to a lot of, a lot of uh, health quests, let's call it. Yeah. Um, you know, there's really only one disease and that seems to be toxicity in the body, whether, wherever it comes from. Yeah. And, um, so that's why I say it's a quest, a quest to heal in your, in your mind, doctor, um, can we heal pretty much anything? I believe there are always cases of miraculous healing that you can't explain. So I, I think every disease can be healed. Will it, you know, what's the odds that it will? Um, I haven't seen autoimmune completely healed. I've seen it go into remission. I've seen it managed and controlled. But I also believe that if you go back to bad habits, go back to those environmental toxins, that that autoimmunity will come roaring right back. I I think you're right about that. Yeah. So how much of this is lifestyle, would you say, when you're having an autoimmune disease? You know, I'm going to say it, it could it could vary from like 25 percent to 90 percent. I mean, you know, your lifestyle involves your emotions. It involves your sleep patterns. It involves your physical activity. It involves your eating habits. It involves so many factors that you can't overlook the lifestyle. It's not just about changing somebody's diet and giving them some supplements to swallow. That lifestyle is critical. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Well, you know, the the world is honestly in a health crisis today <laughs> for many, yeah. for many, many reasons. And um, I'm just, uh, okay, so somebody's listening to this right now and they're thinking, yeah, okay, the world's in a health crisis. Well, I'm in my crisis too. And I, I'm not sure what my symptoms are. Do I have thyroid disease? Do I have Hashimoto's? What are some of the common symptoms of the, of the uh, of thyroid problems? Well, that's the tricky part about thyroid is it's this great mimicker because you could have fatigue, weight gain, hair loss, insomnia, depression, 
digestive problems, heart palpitations. I mean, there's this myriad of symptoms you could have. How do you know it's thyroid? Maybe it's your adrenal gland dysfunction. Maybe it's uh, intestinal permeability. Maybe it's mold toxicity. Maybe it's just psychological. It's, it's so hard to really know that unless you have a doctor that has experience with that to start to narrow it down to see, is it thyroid? Is it adrenal? Is it thyroid and Hashimoto's? Is it Hashimoto's and adrenal? You really have, there's a lot of moving components in that. You really have to find somebody who can start narrowing it down. Okay. Well, all right. And um, I think you mentioned a little earlier, some of the symptoms of the, uh, of the, uh, 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 you know, you mentioned a couple of times that, you know, the uh, fatigue, uh, hair loss and all those things. What, you know, if we go, you know, <clears throat> my wife was similar story to yours. She went to, uh, you know, some MDs and they wanted to give her certain uh, uh, steroids and things of that nature that she decided that maybe that's not what she wanted to put in her body. Mm-hmm. Um I want to ask you about maybe some healthy choices that we can make and maybe some natural ways to maybe start to heal some of these things, but I do have to take a break. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, we'll, we'll answer that when we get back. Okay. UK health radio. The station that makes you feel good. The station that makes you feel good. Well, welcome back, everybody. This is your host, Candy Foster. I'm interviewing Dr. Jill Gill Kajiki, and we're talking uh, about um, about health, your health, and how we can you can maybe get your health back. Um, okay. So natural ways to heal. Is there really natural ways to heal or is this, uh, is this something that, uh, you know, is we're making up? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I believe there are natural ways to heal. Um, I also believe at times medications are necessary. And, And I think as the primary doctor, I have to make that decision on what is really necessary that's a medical issue and what can we do naturally now in in the natural realm i'll tell you i i hesitate to answer this question many times because you can't know what to do until you know what's wrong everybody wants to know what supplement do i take what diet do i do what what kind of exercises can i do but unless you know what's wrong you can't know what to do So I always want to go back to, well, what's wrong first? And then let's figure out what we can do. So do you have an adrenal dysfunction? If you do, what kind? What type of thyroid issue do you have? What kind of autoimmune condition do you have? What's your blood sugar stability like? What kind of food sensitivities do you have? So once I start to narrow down really where those dysfunctions are, then I can create some supplemental protocols or some dietary changes or lifestyle changes at that point. That makes sense. So is the is the first step maybe, uh, you know, setting up an appointment and then uh, doing some blood work? Is that what we're talking about or, you know, really kind of looking at what's going on? Yeah, absolutely. It's patient history is critical. I mean, I, I give my patients a 14 page intake that I actually read. None of my doctors read my intake. I wonder why do you even make me do this exercise? But I actually read it. So I oftentimes know what's going on before I even talk to that person. So I really put some time into my patient history. And then my lab tests, my blood, my stool, saliva, dried urine, hair, that all helps me confirm what type of these dysfunctions that I'm looking for that I call triggers. And that helps me start to formulate my treatment protocol to know what to do. Okay, good. And, um, you know, if somebody's on, let's say, a medication for thyroid, um, do you keep them on it? Do you take them off? What, 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 how do you determine that? Um, the lab test will determine. Sometimes I feel like people are inappropriately medicated, but it's not my position because I didn't prescribe that medication to tell them to stop it, start it, or change it. But I will advise them on, well, here, maybe you might want to talk to your subscribing doctor about this because the numbers and your symptoms show that it's too high a dose, too low a dose, 
maybe the improper medication, but you and your doc prescribing doctor have to make that decision. Yeah. That makes choice. You know, I personally, I, you know, I've been coaching people for the last 26 years and I coach from results, right? What are the results you're getting? And if you're not getting the results you want, um, it, it's uh, that old adage. You know, if you keep doing it over and over again, you're expecting different results, you know, that's on you. You're kind of like, cuckoo. What, why would you do that? Right. right. And yet in, in the medical field, we have so many people and people have come into my practice. I'm not a doctor, but I just, you know, I just say, Hey, well, what's the results you, you, you're getting, what do you want? Right. And if you're not getting it, it's time to change. It's time to change something up. Right. Yeah. I think we have this, this mindset that, but, uh, you know, and, and I believe some some doctors, some practitioners say, well, you'll be on this forever. This is uh, your life. And yeah. for some, maybe that's true, but others, maybe it's not. Right. And, and I think regarding that statement, you're right. Every patient is on thyroid medication for life. But my attitude is, well, let's do some natural things. See if we can decrease some of these toxins going into your body that are causing your thyroid to malfunction. And let's retest periodically six months to a year and see if you really do still need to be on medication or not. That's good. So what, what are some of the treatments for, um, for thyroid disease? What, 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 are, what do people have to look forward to? Well, once again, I, as I mentioned, you have to find out what's wrong before you can know what to do. Now, there are six major ways that that thyroid gland can malfunction. Only one of them responds to medication. So you've got roughly a about a 72% chance that your medication won't be effective. So you've got to know, do I really need the medication? Is it a conversion problem? Is it an underconversion problem? Is it a thyroid binding globulin problem? Is it thyroid resistance? So you really got to know what type of dysfunction there is before you know what to do. And, the, and that a lab test, a full thyroid panel of all 10 tests will tell me that. Yeah, that's very good. You know, I, I want to move over into uh, maybe the cost of some of these treatments. Um, you know, sometimes people are, you know, they're, they're hooked into their, uh, their insurance provider, you know, they yeah. may have a PPO or maybe have an HMO, but you know, they want to, uh, you know, they want to make sure insurance covers all this. And I'm just going to give my point of view and then you can, cause I don't know whether you take insurance or not, but I want to, I want to just say that <clears throat> I don't think we should value our, our health by the cost of an insurance program. Or if you, you know, if somebody's outside of an insurance program, we, we, myself and my wife, I've uh, gone outside of our program several times to get the alternative treatments that we need uh, to be able to heal completely. So we're, right. you know, we're pain free and we're, we're, we're pretty on, we're up in the ears now, but we're pain free in our bodies because we, we notice <laughs> we're on a quest, right? But anyway, what, what uh, let's, let's just talk about that. You know, what's the cost of your treatment? Yeah. Well, cost always varies on complexity of the case. So that's just, understand it's just like a car right here how complex the case is yeah. depends upon what the cost is and i don't know that cost until i get to those lab test results so i really need that first set of lab results to set a baseline for me to know well what's going on how long this is going to take how much it's going to cost and then like you said it's a quest it may take four months it may take 12 months it may take 16 months it may take seven months we don't really know but we'll test periodically along the way to make sure we're on the right track Okay, that's great. Well, listen, um, in our next segment, we're going to be talking about your latest book uh, that's out there, Sick, Tired, Untreated, and Abandoned. And uh, we're going to be talking a lot about that and how you can get that book. Uh, but I do have to take a break, so we will be right back. Hi, this is Ken D. Foster. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're talking about how to get your health back. I'm talking with Dr. Gil Kajiki, and uh, for those of you that don't know him, he's a certified uh, functional medicine practitioner. He's a chiropractor, and he's a patient uh, educator with clients in four continents right now. You need to have more, more, more continents, doctor. Yeah, just four, huh? <laughs> Very good. Um, all right, so let's let's talk a little bit about this amazing book that uh, is out there now that people can uh, find out. Uh, a lot about themselves and uh, the uh, treatment of what we've been talking about. Uh, what inspired you to write Sick, uh, Tired, Untreated, and Abandoned? 
Well, I, you know, after doing this for a number of years, I started really listening to the patient's main complaint about why they were seeking out my care. And it turns out that their doctors have just pretty much abandoned them. Their doctors just said, look, your lab tests are normal. I don't know what to tell you. Go away, in a sense. And so I, I really did kind of a bold title there because I want people to know, like, I get it. I understand what's happening. This happened to my wife too. And so this is about what do I do on the next step? I'm, I'm tired. I'm fatigued. I'm frustrated. My doctor can't help me. My lab tests are normal. What do I do next? And so this is about the next step. You know, how do I figure out what's wrong with me so I can get on this quest for healing? And, and I talk about the evaluations, the lab testing. I primarily talk about something called triggers. I, I have something that I call triggers. And I have nine very common triggers that I look for and treat. It's not all of them, but the nine most common. So in this book, I go over in detail about looking for anemia, blood sugar instability, adrenal gland dysfunction, hormone imbalance, inflammation, gastrointestinal problems, food sensitivities, chemical sensitivities, and hidden infections. Those same triggers are the same triggers that agitate the immune system and cause the immune system to attack the thyroid or attack the joints or attack your intestinal tract. But those triggers are also body dysfunctions that very closely mimic a thyroid problem, but isn't a thyroid problem. Wow. So the patient is taking their thyroid medication, their lab tests are normal, but they still have all of these thyroid symptoms and their doctor just dismisses them because their lab tests are normal. Well, there's got to be something else going on. And so I look for these triggers. That's interesting. Yeah. So even though the lab tests are normal, there can be other, uh, there can be issues going on. How come the lab tests don't, don't uh, reveal what's going on? That's interesting. Yes. And I tell patients, look, there's no way your lab test can be normal and you still have all these symptoms. That's impossible. That, that can't be. So there, there's typically three reasons why is the doctors are reading the test wrong. They're doing the wrong tests or not doing enough of them, likely all three. And that issue comes that if you choose to get your opinions about your health from conventional medicine, understand and accept the fact that they are influenced by the pharmaceutical and insurance companies. So those insurance companies will only do what's medically necessary to prescribe medication or surgery. Mm -hmm. They won't dig any further. So typically they'll only do three out of 10 thyroid tests. And if those three come out normal, you're stuck. They won't do anymore. Interesting. Yeah, you know, I was recently in Los Angeles and uh, we went to uh, get some blood drawn and uh, <clears throat> it was, uh, you know, a major, major blood drawing facility. And they had on their window, uh, we test for 3000 different uh, issues. And I thought, oh, my goodness. No wonder they can get it wrong. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they've got 3,000 ways to go, wow. You know, I thought that. I thought, well, that's kind of cool. 3,000 3, uh, markers in your body. That's very interesting. <laughs> um, do you use kinesiology at all in the practice today? Um, you know, I don't because I have a virtual practice. Yeah. So I, I, I've used kinesiology and I know that kinesiology is very, very effective when you're one-on-one -on -one engaging physically with that patient. But because I'm virtual, I don't use kinesiology. I primarily rely on my lab tests, markers, and my, pa my patient history. Okay, good. And back to the book, uh, I, that just came up that question, but back to the book, um, what, uh, uh, what, what would you say for those that read that book or some of the uh, takeaways that they'll, they'll have with reading that book? I think one of the biggest ones is they're going to realize that you can't just heal just from changing your diet. Many, many patients have said, I've stopped gluten, I've stopped dairy, and I still feel lousy. Yeah, because that's only one out of nine of those triggers. And in the food sensitivity category, there's probably... 10 or 15 different foods that you need to stay away from temporarily. So they're realizing that, hey, I, I'm going to go from, I don't know what to do next to, ooh, there's nine triggers. Maybe now I, I've narrowed it down from, I don't know what to do to nine triggers. And now how do I find out which of these triggers I have? I do these types of lab tests. And now I just have to find a practitioner 
that does these types of lab tests and looks for these triggers, and I'm going to be on the right path. That's awesome. I'm glad you mentioned that you're virtual because so many people today uh, are listening to this. In fact, they're listening to the show around the world. We're syndicated in 185 countries. And uh, so if you're listening uh, out there, you know, one of the things I did say, and I want to emphasize this, is that uh, Dr. Kajiki has patients on four continents. So if yeah. you're listening to this, you can give him uh, a call or you can connect with him. We put it on the screen, uh, drkajiki.com, and that's spelled K-A-J-I-K-I, K-A-J-I-K-I.com, drkajiki.com. So um, if you're if you're listening to this um, now, your, your consultations is that you have uh, uh, stuff. So our, our clients, our, page, our audience knows. <laughs> yeah, I, I do all my uh, international consultations through Zoom or Skype. You know, I do all my domestic through phone. Uh, but, you know, I, I've treated people in Canada and New Zealand and Germany and even even China, if you have an internet signal, a phone line, and you can get something delivered, I can work with you. That's great. That's great. And um, uh, oh, the book. Let me let me jump back to the book one more time. Where can people get the uh, the, the book? Well, actually, the book you can get on my my website. You can go to drkajiki.com. And you can get the Amazon link to buy the book and Amazon will ship it out to you as soon as you order. Okay. Okay. So that makes it easy. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, all right. I, um, I've got so many questions for you around these autoimmune diseases and, you know, and how to heal them. Um, I'm wondering uh, a couple things. So give me an example, like somebody comes in and, uh, you know, and I know you can't diagnose or treat, you know, I just want a general sense of, you know, what happens when somebody calls you, they get on the, on the internet with you, they're on zoom, you're talking about it. Um, what typically takes place? So I want to, I really want to hear the history. I want to hear when did it start? How long have you had it? When does it bother you? And then I want to know these symptoms because the symptoms tell me where I want to start looking for these triggers. So they may tell me I have fatigue, I have hair loss, I have insomnia, I have digestive issues. And from there, I can start determining, well, what kind of trigger am I looking for? Am I looking for an anemia trigger, an adrenal dysfunction trigger, a gastrointestinal trigger, a hidden infection trigger? And then I could start doing asking for the lab tests that would confirm that they do have those triggers or not. So that, con- that first consultation is about finding out about what's bothering them, what kind of triggers do I think they have, and then I'll order the appropriate lab test to confirm those triggers. Okay, great. And, and, you know, from my edification, what type of alternative treatments might one uh, experience through you? Well, um, for example, inflammation is a big, big component of every disease process. There is no disease process that occurs without inflammation as a perpetuator or initiator of that condition. So inflammation is huge. So I would put them on a de-inflammatory eating plan where I take away all these potentially inflammatory foods like dairy and gluten and soy, nightshades, sometimes even nuts and seeds. And then I give them some very powerful anti-inflammatory liposomal supplements to start calming down that inflammation while I look for what the root cause of how that inflammation got started and continued. What, what are some of the uh, symptoms of inflammation in the gut? Uh, what, what would you I say? Mean, what, what a, one of the obvious ones is bloating. If your stomach is bloating out, if you're feeling bloating 10, 15 minutes after you eat, it's probably higher up in the digestive tract, like the stomach. If you're feeling it 30 minutes to an hour after you eat, it's probably lower down in the small intestine. So I can kind of identify what part of that digestion that inflammation is in based on your symptoms that you tell me. Um, Diarrhea is a sign of inflammation. Your body wants to get that out because there's some inflammation or irritation in, in that cold. So it wants to get it out of there. Um, it's, there's a very strong connection between brain and gut. So many times you might feel brain fog after you eat something that bloats you. So that connection, now there's inflammation in the brain that came from the gut. Well, I think a lot of people have that brain fog. Uh, I sure come across a lot of people like that. Um, 
I want to talk a little bit more about that. I got to take another break. Uh, we'll be back in just a minute. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, this is Ken D. Foster. I'm talking with Dr. Gil Kajiki, and we're talking ways that are revolutionizing uh, medicine, quite frankly, in, uh, in ways that you can start to heal thyroidism, uh, thyroid disease, uh, Hashimoto's disease, things of that nature. Um, so, doctor, uh, you know, one of the uh, uh, symptoms of, of course, you know, these diseases is uh, brain fog. Um, a lot of people have that and yet they, you know, they say, oh, I'm just getting old or, oh, this is temporary or, oh, you know, is this, uh, can, this is all connected, isn't it? It, it very much is. There, there's a very strong brain gut connection that people, we don't even really think about it, but, you know, you see something that really makes you sick to your stomach. You visually saw it, your brain processed the picture, and now you feel it in your gut. So there's a very strong brain gut connection. And whenever there's any kind of mood disorders, behavioral disorders, uh, poor, poor thought processing, poor concentration, I always look to that gut first. I want to fix that gut first. I want to take away what's causing the inflammation, what's causing the irritation. Is there an infection in there? Do you have proper digestion? And then we'll see how much of those brain disorders start to clear up. And then I know that at that point, that gut is pretty much fixed. And then I could start working on what's what else is causing that brain dysfunction. I love that. You know, uh, one of my teachers said, wisdom is the greatest cleanser. You know, well, it's the body, the emotions, uh, whatever. It's the greatest cleanser. But wisdom is developed through experience. And uh, you, you know, you obviously have this experience in working with people. Is there anybody that like comes in and they just can't heal? Like they, they're not going to get any benefit. I don't believe that. I believe every case can improve. It may not be completely healed and resolved, but I always want to give people hope that, look, we can make it better. We don't know how much better. Maybe it's going to be 50% better. Maybe it's going to be 95% better. But I believe every case can improve. And if I find those lab markers that are abnormal and I work on those triggers, I can say almost every case is has gotten better. If that patient did their part and I did my part, every case has gotten better. Doctor, how do you get people out of denial that they actually <laughs> have a disease or that they need to really do something different? I, you know, I don't think you can deny objective lab markers. I think when I do blood panels and I show them their abnormal markers and what triggers there are, and I show them their stool tests and I show them they have a dysbiosis, an imbalance of their good bacteria, or they have an infection, I don't think you can deny those. Those are That's objective evidence, and you can't deny looking at a piece of paper with your own results that that doesn't exist. Yeah. Well, what we deny persists. And, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, there are some people that might be a little concerned uh, even coming to see you because they maybe don't want the diagnosis. They're like, you know, they're like, well, if I, what I don't know won't hurt me. Um, I'm not sure yeah. that that's true. but yeah. Right. And, and that's one of the reasons why I really stay away from the diagnosis. I stay away from the labels because diagnoses really, it's just to bill insurance. Because if you don't have a diagnosis, you can't bill insurance. They'll, they'll deny it. So I stay away from the diagnosis. The diagnosis doesn't tell you how to treat it. It doesn't matter if it's called ALS or ABC or PCOS or 123. It doesn't tell you how to treat it. But if you look for those triggers and you see how those triggers relate to their symptoms, and I say, you've got adrenal dysfunction. Let's find out what type. You have blood sugar instability. Let's find out what type. You have digestive dysfunction. You find out a type. It's not so scary as having that label. And there's something we can actually work on. That's really good. 
What would you say your uh, the difference between your work and let's say uh, somebody goes to an uh, endocrinologist? Well, if you go to an endocrinologist and they are in conventional medicine, they are going to look for pathology and disease. And if they don't find pathology or disease, you're considered normal and you will be dismissed. So if they do find pathology disease, they're going to use medication or surgery to resolve that. And so you have to decide if you want to go that route or not. That's good. What, uh, you know, what you've, you've been doing this for a while. So uh, is there any new trends showing up with thyroid patients or Hashimoto disease or what, what kind of trends do you see happening out there? Well, you know, the research, I, I try to keep up, up on research as much as I can. And there's a lot more to this immune system than we ever thought there was, especially with COVID coming around. We're really researching the immune system. And why is it that people who didn't get any vaccinations never came down with COVID? How is that possible when almost everyone has? Fortunately, my wife and I, we've never come down with any symptoms of COVID. We're out in public all the time. Right. So there's something about my immune system that's very resistant to this virus that my body has never seen before. So we're learning more and more about immune system function and, and how to really prevent disease rather than get it and then try to treat it. Well, shouldn't we be studying uh, you? <laughs> we, should be studying, <laughs> we should be studying people that, uh, you know, got the results that we all want, right? You know, they, yeah. didn't, they didn't get the disease. Yes. I, it, it, and I'm very much like you is like, I've got insurance in case I break my arm or crack my head open or, but other than that, I don't use my insurance because they don't suit my needs for preventative health care and natural health care. So I, I pay tons of money out of pocket for lab testing and, and supplementation and organic foods. Yeah, it's expensive and it's a hassle, but I'm well. I, I tend to, you know, I, we only eat organic, uh, you know, we've been doing that for years and I tend to see that uh, it's just a preventative today. You know, mm-hmm. you, your food will not only taste better, they'll have more nutrient nutrients in there, um, but it's a good way to prevent uh, any disease or illness. And it is a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle and it looks like it costs more initially, but in the long run, if you're feeling healthy, you're vital, you're living longer, you're you're full of energy. Your mind is clear. You're, you're, you, I, I don't, you know, I can't see that that's costing you anything, uh, right. but what, what it is, it's costing you if you're not really conscious, if right. you're not putting in the right. highest nutrition that you can into this, into this body that we have. Um, all right. So what else could I ask you today, doctor, that I haven't asked you about, uh, about this, uh, these uh, issues that we're talking about here? Well, you know, most people, when they, when they come consult with me, they want to know, can you help me? Right? I've been to 10 other doctors. I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars. And, you know, how do, how do I know you're going to be able to help me when all these 10, 10 doctors haven't been able to? And really, I tell people that, look, if you hear something different that you haven't heard before, you're probably going to get different results. And which of your doctors has addressed these triggers? Which of them has done stool testing and saliva testing and blood testing? Because that's really where you're going to find out what's going on. This is why they missed it. This is why you're still unhealthy because they miss those basic triggers that are really causing your symptoms. It's not because you have a lack of thyroid medication. So let's find out why your thyroid is dysfunctioning first. Let's look for inflammation. Let's let's look for adrenal gland dysfunction. Let's look for gut dysbiosis. So I I feel like people come to me for that different kind of answer, which means they're going to get a different kind of result. I really like what you said, you know, that, uh, you know, it's it's, uh, the theme of my show is helping people to see the unseeable and know the unknowable and do the impossible. So, you know, if you if you can't see something you haven't seen before, you're probably going to be down the same path that you've been before. Yeah. And that's what the good doctor is telling us today. So I hope you'll uh, you'll you'll take this time, you know, to really 
be courageous, right? This show is all about courage. Well, sometimes it takes courage to make those phone calls or connect and reach out to practitioners that could really take you and your your uh, health uh, to a whole new level. So um, step into your courage. You know, my question to you as an audience would be, if you were courageous today, if you're courageous, what are the three steps that you take today to heal your body completely? Okay. And if not completely, the, the highest and best it can possibly be. You know, what are those three steps? Well, doctor, okay, we're uh, going to wrap up here, but uh, you know, you got the microphone to the world right now. Okay. We're in 185 countries. So what's your message uh, to the world around health and nutrition and vitality and what we're talking about here today? There's always hope. Okay. When people tell me I've been to everybody, you haven't been to everybody. There's always hope. There's always an answer out there. You just have to find it. And shows like yours are that first step in saying, maybe I'll check this out. Maybe this guy is onto something that I haven't heard before. Let me get his book and see what these triggers are. What kinds of lab testing does he do? Does this make sense for me? But don't lose hope for your health. There's always an answer out there. Hmm. That's the title of a new book, Hope for Your Health. <laughs> I love it. Thank you for that. I'd like to uh, show our audience one more time on the screen. We've got Sick, Tired, Untreated, and Abandoned. And you can get that at uh, Dr. Kajabi's uh, <laughs> uh, website. Uh, doctor, uh, uh, can you give that website address one more time? Yes, it's www.dr. K-A-J-I-K-I.com, drkajiki.com. Drkajiki.com, not Kajabi. I've got Kajabi in my head. <laughs> That's how I, I we, we work with the Kajabi. So anyway, got, Dr. Kajibi, thank you so much for being here. And it's been an honor to uh, listen to your wisdom and, and understanding around these issues. So I appreciate it so much. And uh, I wish you much success in, in all you do in the future here. Thank you for your time, Ken. I appreciate it. All righty. And all of you that uh, continue to listen to the show, I want to thank you for tuning in. And I want to let you know that these shows are on our website, voicesofcourage.us. You can get all of our shows and uh, that all of the past shows up there. You can also join our Insiders Club up there and you can get information uh, that uh, is pertinent to you in the different areas of your life. And you'll also get uh, free tickets to some of the events. You'll get informed of some of these major events that are coming up. Uh, right now, I'm in an event that uh, is called the Global Oneness Summit. Uh, we have uh, about 100 speakers on there that are uh, talking about issues that, uh, of consciousness, of well-being, of health, nutrition, and, and uh, helping you to raise up your, your thinking. So those kind of shows are, uh, are, you'll be informed of. So I hope you'll join our Insiders Club and from my heart to yours, again, keep on looking for and seeking and know the unknowable, do the impossible and have a blessed day. Take care. Mm-hmm.